These end times are hard because they have to reconcile two physical phenomena, aka the rotation of the Earth and its orbit around the Sun, with a whole raft of geopolitical phenomena, including time zone and month. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. We won't get into every last detail about dates and times in this video, but we will lay a solid grounding of practical skills that can help you with your common analytics challenges. So today's video is going to be divided into four different sections. So firstly, we're going to briefly look at the two data types. And then uh, in section two, we will extract different components of dates and times and practice some math. And next up, how to subset based on dates and time. And also, lastly, um, how to use aggregate function involving date and time. So during this tutorial, I'm going to show you some pitfalls and errors to avoid in your own work. I will also put a time stamp down so feel free to jump to the sections that you're looking for For today's exercise, we're going to be using Microsoft SQL Server. And um, I've also compiled a Notion page comparing different syntax in various SQL platforms. So I will make sure to leave it down below and feel free to grab it. Now, first thing first, let's see what we've got in our data. So this is a table tracking user purchases from our online marketplace. And we have user ID coded as a string variable, and then the corresponding purchase amount, which is a float. And we also have the login date of that user coded as date time, which we will talk in a bit. And the next one, we have shipping date coded as the date data type. And lastly, we have our delivery date, which looks like a date, but really um, it's coded as a string. Now we talk about dates and time in our daily life every single day, but um, what the heck are they in the database environment, right? So here shows what a date time looks like in the database. Um, it basically consists of multiple components as shown on the screen. Here at the, at the very last, that's the time zone. And for now, we can safely ignore it. If we take out the time part, then that will give us a date. And we can use um, the function cast in SQL. In a nutshell, the cast function converts a value from one data type to another. And the syntax is pretty straightforward. We just uh, specify the column name and then the corresponding data type we'd like to convert to. So for example, right now here, um, we are converting the login date time to a corresponding date format. And similarly, we can also cast a date to a date time if we want to cast the shaping date to its corresponding shaping date time. Now, one caveat here is that since we don't have hours or minutes specified, then uh, the default value is zero, zero. To be honest, it's it really happens that we need to convert a date to time because it's dangerous to assume that all these hours and minutes are zeros. But um, uh, here, I want to show you this example as a primer um, because we're going to look at this later in section three. Now we can also convert a date time to a string and specify the maximum length of that string. So one error that you might run into when you convert a date to a string is that it doesn't simply put a quotation marks around the date, but rather it actually converts it to the character string for that particular date. Now you may be like, I don't want my logging date to look like this. I want it to be like this, then in that case, we will need a more advanced function to specify the style and that is the convert function. So here's how we do it. The convert function um, takes in three different arguments. The first one is our desired data type. Um, and then the second one is our input value, which is the login date. And the third one is the style integer. In this example, we specify 110. And if we look up style number in here, we can see 110 follows the USA style. The month comes before date, which is followed by four digit year. Now, as we can see that the date has been reformatted to this format. And then again, we can also convert it to a different style like this 101 style. In this lookup table, we can see that's also a, a very common uh, style in the United States. And let's see if it's going to give us the format we want. Um, and it did. Now, if you could pause here and think about how can we convert this delivery date string to a date, and we would like it to follow the UK style, which is 103. The format is two digit day 
forward slash two digit months, forward slash and four digit year. We can just go ahead and um, specify the 103 like this because our delivery date is a string variable. So we want to convert it to a date and then the style uh, number is 103, which basically follows this format. Okay, so here is the output. Since we are specifying the UK style, which basically tells SQL that the first two digit is day and then the second two digit is month. So after we convert it to the ISO standard, this will follow year and then the corresponding month, which is 12 and the corresponding day, which is 06. And now I want to show you how important it is to specify the correct integer style um, in our code. So let's see, I'd like to convert it to the US style as well, which is month um, and followed by day and then the four digit year. If we compare this two converted date, we can see the order of the month and day all switched between UK and US. Now, another example is something like this. In the first one, we're converting this 2512 to um, a date and we're following the US style, which basically uh, tells SQL that, okay, the 25 is the corresponding month and 12 is the corresponding day. So that's why we got this error saying that conversion failed because 25 is not a valid month. However, if we run the second one to specify the 103, which is the UK style, which tells SQL that first one is a day, then this won't give us an error because that's a valid date. Now let's move on to section two, uh, data time components and some math about data time. So now if we'd like to um, return a single part of the date time, what we can do is use this function date part. So this will return the corresponding day. The date part function takes in two arguments. So the first one is the unit we want to return and the second one is the input value, which is pretty straightforward. Um, and then the other alternative way um, to do the same thing is to just use this uh, day or month function. So this will give us exactly the same output. And now we can also extract the corresponding month of the shipping date. And again, the return is an integer value indicates the months of the date we are working with. And then the next useful function is this date name function. So this function actually tells you what day of that particular date. And similarly, if we specify date, time, week, then it will tell you on which week of the whole year this particular uh, date falls. Now to determine the elapsed time between two dates, we use the function date diff takes in three arguments. The first one is the unit, and then the second one is the earlier date and the third one is a later date. So we're gonna use the second one minus the first one to calculate the time difference. And then um, I call it process day in our example. As we can see, the, the date difference between the first record is zero since they are processed on the same day. And then we can also change the unit. For example, we change it from day to minute and we wanna calculate the minute difference between our shipping date and the login date time. This is the output, pretty straightforward. Now, how about we wanna add additional time interval? So for example, we wanna add 10 days on top of our login date. So what we can use is date add function. This function takes in three arguments. The first one is the unit we wanna add, and then the second one is the amount of that unit we wanna add on top of this input value, which is our login date time. So if we run this code, we can see, okay, so that's basically adding additional 10 days on top of our login date without really changing the following. And then similarly, we can add, for example, additional six months on top of the shipping date. And now how about we wanna subtract, right? So for example, we would like to subtract a day from our shipping date. So we use the same function date add but instead of specifying a positive value, we actually specify it as a negative value. This will give us a day before our shipping date. With this, I wanna wrap it up here as the part one of our date manipulation in SQL. 
For a comparison of different syntax in various SQL platforms, please don't forget to check the Notion page linked down below. And in the upcoming part two, we're going to talk about section three and four, which is subsetting with dates and also aggregate functions. So stay tuned for that. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss my videos in the future. And see you guys pretty soon in my next video. Bye, guys.